parents and families of Flagler College, we're here with our live Ask Me Anything panel. I'm Jill Dawson, I'm the Director of First Year Experience, and I'm going to let our other panelists introduce themselves before we get to some questions. Hi, I'm Tara Stevenson, I'm the Director of the Career Development Center. Hi, I'm Terry Hall, one of the Associate Directors in Financial Aid. Hi, I'm Samara Gluck, and I'm part of the Parent Leadership Committee. Hi, I'm Michelle Holland, and I'm the Director of Residence Life. I'm Tim Mellon, I'm the Director of Student Activities. So this is our first live event. We may have some problems. We appreciate you guys hanging with us. Um, so I'm going to kick it off with one question of my own before we turn to your questions. Um, so if you guys could give incoming students or parents one piece of advice, what would it be? Why don't we start with you, Tim? Sure. I think the, the big thing is try to get to know as many people as possible once you start getting in here. Uh, you're probably coming in with uh, very little um, friend groups or friendships already, um, so just try to get outside your comfort zone and, and really meet as many faculty, staff, and students as you can. My biggest piece of advice it would be to be cognizant of what you bring on move-in day. Look at the size of your room, kind of talk to your roommates, assess the necessities, because if you come with a lot of stuff, I can guarantee you it's not all going to fit in your room. Um, as a parent, I can tell you, ask questions. The, everybody here wants to help you, and then you'll know what to bring in for move-in day, what you need, what you don't need, and how to get around the campus. For financial aid, I would say the most important thing is to keep an eye on your email that you receive and always open it, don't ignore it. it has important information, things, documents that you may need, your award, different things like that. Emails your friend. My piece of advice is your student may come to you and want to try something really outside of the box or add something random, like a new major or minor that they would never talked about. And my advice to you is to really support them in that and let them try it out. Try that different class, try that different club or organization, be supportive of them as they're trying to figure things out. And th this is all great pieces of advice. For the parents out there, uh, I would really encourage you to get your students in the habit of reaching out to us on their own. Um, we know sometimes it's, it's you have to remind them a hundred times, nag them a little bit to send that email, make that phone call, um, but we really want to work with them and help them, so encourage them to get into that habit. We don't have any questions just yet, so if you guys are tuning in, comment in the section on the live feed and we'll be happy to take any questions you have about anything, and if we don't know the answer, we'll try to find it. Um, what are some of the most common, frequently asked questions that you guys get to your offices from, from students that maybe we can answer now? Why don't we go the other way this time? Tara, why don't you start? <laughs> your student will be employed or go to graduate school after their time here at Flagler. Um, it may take a little bit of time, but they eventually will. Um, parents are always wondering the ROI, and things will work out for them. They will find opportunities. The more that they work as students to find those opportunities and be proactive, the better opportunity they will have, the faster they will have, which will create a lot less anxiety on your part and the student's part. How about you, Terry? What are, we know you guys are busy this time of year. <laughs> yes. Um, I think one of the most popular questions is, when is my refund coming? Um, refunds do not come until after a drop ad. Uh, and then even once drop ad ends, it's not right away. We have to make sure that the students are in the correct number of classes and meeting the requirements for whatever financial aid they may have. I guess one of the more popular questions would be, what is the Parent Leadership Council? And it's really just a volunteer group that gets together just a couple times a year for meetings, and we help out at move-in day. We help. Um, with the parents and, and getting them kind of situated. We meet with the president at the meetings and we get to be part of the community of Flagler College. One of the biggest ones I'm getting now is when am I going to get my housing assignment? June 1st. <laughs> um, <laughs> with it we do our best to accommodate all roommate requests, suite mate requests. We do the best that we can. It may not be perfect but encourage your student to be open-minded to it. This is a new experience for everybody and it's this one unifying experience that all of our incoming students have. They're all gonna be nervous. Even if the other students say they're not, they're lying, they're nervous. <laughs> <laughs> um, and with it, when you come in, we're gonna configure the rooms to give them the most floor space possible. So the beds might be bunked, but we're trying to make sure that they have that floor space. 
as what was it stepbrothers more floor space more activities <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> how about you Tim sure the, the thing I get asked the most is how do I find out what's happening on campus and there's a number of ways like we were saying earlier email is your friend you're gonna get weekly email from multiple offices you'll get email scattered throughout the week of things that are gonna happen uh, that day later that week um, there is fl there are flyers all over campus that show upcoming events and then we have our website www.flagware.edu slash the hammock and that has a calendar of all the events that are coming up throughout the academic year all right let's see how oh, we finally are getting some questions awesome let's see what we've got here well good question so what are the top five essentials needed by freshmen I'll go ahead and chime in with one answer because it's raining today it's rain boots and a great umbrella so make sure you bring those it does rain a lot here and it does flood um, let's, Michelle what would you say are the top five essentials a mattress pad for your bed, Twin XL, because um, they're going to spend a lot of time. You think they're going to study at their desk? They don't. They study in their beds. Um, ooh, cleaning supplies, toilet paper, mm, two other things. Definitely a good computer or an access to something because a lot of their work is going to be online and it's become very digital. And then open-mindedness honestly because it's a new experience and that's something we're you're going to hear from all of us keeping to re-emphasize over and over again just being open-minded to new experiences and new people did you guys add anything to that list i think if that last one's a little bit hard bring some really good headphones because then you can tune out when you need to yes <laughs> yes you can also be respectful of others when you're getting into something Sunscreen. Yeah, <laughs> sunscreen. Bug spray. We were bug talking spray. about the bugs earlier here in Florida. If you're coming from out of state, we do have a lot of, a lot of bugs here in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a question here from Rhonda. Is there an advisor available during the summer to help with schedules? Yes, absolutely. Um, your student, once they're cleared to register, will receive an email with their first year advisor or their academic advisor's contact information. Some of our faculty are traveling during the summer. They're leading study abroad. Uh, where they're all doing research. So we know that sometimes they can be slow to reply. If they're having tr any trouble reaching their advisor, they can always reach out to me. Uh, my email is just jdawson at flagler.edu, and I'll be happy to help them uh, create their schedules. So let's see. Oh, uh, we got a question, another question about housing from Dawn. When will students be notified of who their roommate will be? They will be able to find that out on June 1st when housing assignments are released through their My Flagler account, and their roommate will be listed right next to their room assignment. We've got a number of questions coming in about uh, computer options. So Leslie, Holly, and Julie all asked about um, what kind of laptop that students will need dependent on their major. Um, I believe that our, our, our fine arts majors are often encouraged to get a Mac product, if I remember correctly, a MacBook, um, to help with some of the software they need. Other than that, something that is sturdy and reliable, PC or Mac, uh, works great. Uh, students can get some free or discounted software through our IT program, but if they have specific questions about uh, requirements, they can also always reach out to our IT department at support at flagler.edu. Let's see, what else do we have here? Business, computers, um, keep those questions coming in while we're waiting on some more to come in. What are some underutilized campus resources that, that maybe students don't know or hear or they're not reaching out to them that can really help them during that transition? I would say one area is the Learning Resource Center because they do provide tutors because it is a different realm than high school is. Classes could be a little bit harder and a lot of the tutors there are students so it would be peer-to-peer -peer interaction that would assist them within that transitional period. Anything else? How about you guys offer a lot of budgeting workshops throughout the year? We do and um, highly recommend that all students come no matter if you're a freshman through a soft sophomore senior um, we do not have a lot of turnout yet but we do offer a lot of information about finances how to budget your money spending we talk about loans if you have loans and how that works and things like that which is very helpful um, preparing a student for even once they're out of school absolutely we know it's expensive we want to help you um, see Jerry says I appreciate the notification about the weather warning this morning even though we aren't there yet that's a great um, segue into maybe talking a little bit about safety we know parents are concerned about safety Michelle you work quite a bit on safety at the college can you talk a little bit about how we keep students 
informed and, and how they can stay safe on campus? Yeah, of course. So we use an app called LiveSafe. So you can go on Apple or Android and download it. It's the blue icon. There's two. And with it on there, it has emergency numbers. It has all of our emergency management plans so that parents and students have access to it. It keeps us up to date on information such as the weather warning. Um, when we have the hurricanes or even if there's something going on in town, it's a really great resource. And my favorite part of it is it's got a watch app. Like, so if you download it and your student downloads it, you can, and they connect, you can watch your student walk home from work. You can watch your student walk home or walk from class to their residence hall or to a friend's house. And it adds an extra layer of safety because you know their location and you're able to get them help if they need it. As well as we do have blue boxes on campus. We have swipe cards in and out of all of our buildings and a security force that's very up to date on training and wanting to engage with the students as well. Fantastic. Um, Dawn asks, are, are there restrictions with freshmen working a, a job? Tara, do you want to talk a little <laughs> bit about students working on or off campus even from their arrival? Yeah, absolutely. Coming and starting at Flagler, starting in college is a huge transition for everyone because life is really changing to being at home versus being on your own and figuring out how that will all work. Students can absolutely begin working once they arrive on campus. My personal opinion is I encourage students to figure out the lay of the land first for a semester, figure out their study schedule, their workload within the classroom, their connections and socializing, socializing off campus and around campus first, and then look at a job to kind of balance that time. There are no restrictions for students to begin working once they arrive on campus. There are limited on-campus opportunities, the ones that are paid positions, very, very few and far between. However, we have a work-study program that is run through financial aid. It is needs-based, and so you would need to connect with your financial aid counselor. However, our office really connects students with opportunities that are off campus. So if you're looking to walk somewhere, look locally down St. George Street or right up and down King Street, or if you're looking to travel a little bit more, a 10, 15 minute car ride, then we can help with that. Awesome. Let's, May I say oh yeah, something? go ahead, I'm Terry. Sorry. Um, speaking of work study, um, if you are interested in work study, it is six hours a week, so it's not a lot. Of course, your number one job is, is school. Uh, if you do, work study, the money actually goes to you. It does not reduce the cost of your tuition. So that paycheck goes directly to the to the student. And we love our work study students. I'm sure They're everybody great. up yes. here has yes. them. We, we love Wonderful. them to get the, the labor. Um, so Danya has a question about the Live Safe app. She said, what's the app name again? It is Live Safe, spelled just like it sounds. Um, and you can search Live Safe in the App Store to find it and download. Um, let's see, if a student is not bringing a car, is there a bus or shuttle to the beach? How do you guys see students getting getting around town and how do some of our shuttle options work? We do send out an, an orientation packet that we will send to the parents with information on shuttles, either to the airports or to the beach, and a lot of the times the students will make friends mm -hmm. and they carpool to the beach, even if they have their own vehicle, a big group of them will go together mm -hmm. as well. What about options for our security shuttle? Does, will the security shuttle pick them up anywhere around town, especially at night? With it, it's got limited. It'll pick them up anywhere on our campus and drop them off on our campus as well. Um, as well as security officers will walk individuals between buildings into an order that security as well. Fantastic. Um, another financial aid question. Who do I contact for discussing, discussing scholarships and is there still time to apply before the fall semester? This is from Robert. It is, there is still time to apply for financial aid. If you have not done that yet, uh, the federal application is the FAFSA, www.fafsa.ed.gov. You'll want to use your 2015 tax information. Both the student and one of the parents will need to receive a PIN in order to electronically sign that federal application, and I recommend that. And you would log in to um, user ID to, to receive that PIN, and I would write that down because you'll use it the whole time you're in college and even if you go to grad school. Scholarships, I would say check with your guidance counselor, local organizations in town have scholarships, look at um, 
other areas surrounding your town or outside your town. As far as scholarships for Flagler, most of those scholarships have been given out. A lot of the freshmen do not receive um, out scholarships until they've been here for a while, not unless you've been awarded something from the admissions office and they notify us of those students who have received those and that's in their award package. But as I said, keep an eye on your email because we do send an email out after the first of the year for our scholarship line to go up and then that's when you would start applying for scholarships for Flagler because they want you to be here for a while to see what your GPA is and see how you're doing in order to um, receive some of the scholarships. What about deadlines if, if uh, families or students don't quite have all their paperwork in or they're still looking to apply for some loans? When do you guys need that, that information in? Of course, as soon as possible. We cannot actually release any funds until we have all the documents needed. Let's say if you're selected for verification, we have to have all those documents because the money will not disperse and our business office cannot see the funds if there's missing information mm -hmm. but again you may not have the funds in place right away or your documents but once you get them in then the funds can be released so we've got a question here from Rhonda that I know we get quite a bit from our students um, can students use command hooks in the residence halls and if if not what can they use they cannot use command strips in the residence halls. It pulls off our paint. <laughs> um, with it, there's a blue or a yellow poster putty is what we recommend using. Also within the residence halls, depending on which one it is, um, Ponds Hall has bulletin boards and some stripes that they're able to tack things onto within the rooms. And Cedar and Lewis both have bulletin boards as well that individuals are able to hang stuff on. Awesome. Uh, we've got a number of questions here from Sherry. Uh, she wants to know about dorm location. Uh, those will be posted at the same time that his roommate assignments are posted, so they'll get to see their room. Is the parking pay pass available online? Um, I don't believe those have been released yet by our business office, but students will get an email when those are available for purchase, and they can log in online and purchase it, or they can purchase it when they get to campus in August. Um, is there a sink and mirror in the room? In their residence hall rooms depending on the building um ponts some rooms have sinks in them some rooms don't um cedar all the rooms have sink and mirrors within the room lewis it's within the bathroom fec it is within the room and aver hall it is within the room who stocks the bathroom the shower curtain liner toilet paper the individuals coming in. Okay, Do. so mm -hmm. students should bring anything and everything they're going to need for that bathroom. Yes. Um, should the student bring an area rug? It depends on which building that they're in. I would really recommend seeing your room first, kind of gauging what it looks like because you can look at the floor plans, but it can be difficult kind of to gauge where it's at. What all comes in their rooms? Let's just put that out there. What, when the students arrive, what all is going to be in their room? They will have a bed, mattress, desk, chair, dresser, and closet per and, student. And what about a, a microwave refrigerator? Oh yes, and every it comes with micro fridges and microwaves as well. So you don't have to pack that, They'll ask because I see a question here about microwaves and fridges, so those, those will already be in there. Um, let's see, when are monies due for first semester payment? I believe don't bills go out July August 1st is payment deadline um, we'll be sending for freshmen coming in or transfer students new students bills I've been told should go out by the end of June hopefully um, it will be a paper bill but once you've been here say your second semester you need to look at your emails because that's where you'll see what you owe um, paper bills will only go out as a freshman that first semester. Is there financial aid award for the year or do students have to reapply every it's, semester? It's for the year normally. Um, sometimes parents may apply for a parent loan for one semester and not do it for the second semester and then they would have to reapply. My recommendation is, is figure out what you need for the year and do it for the whole year fall spring. That way you're not worrying if you're going to be short come spring if something happens. And for students who've received those financial aid award packages, when's the, what's the deadline for them to accept that award? I would recommend accepting it right away. Of course, if it's not accepted and it's still showing pending, that 
it's not going to show up on your account in the business office so your ba balance is going to be higher so I would go ahead and accept whatever aid that you want and if you choose not to choose to take something decline it um, I would recommend taking everything the only thing that possibly you would maybe want to decline would be the student loans um, but all the other aid I would take because that's money that you don't have to pay back not unless it's a, a student loan or a private loan we, we've got a question here from Sherry about books. So you've gone through this with your students here at Flagler. Right. What did you find to be the best options for books? And, and did they did they go to the bookstore link? Did they buy used books? They've kind of done it all. Um, they have gone to the bookstore and purchased books that they want to keep. Mm -hmm. Mostly they rent textbooks because a textbook, once you've used it, unless you have a class that's going to use it twice, you don't really need it. If it's within your major and it's got a good chunk of what you're going to be using in the future, then there have been books they have chosen to keep and those they do purchase. And those book lists will usually be posted around August 1st on our bookstore website, which is flaglercollegebookstore.com. And you can comparison shop on the website, you can get the list there, you can reserve your books, you can rent them the whole nine yards. Um, do students need an ethernet cable? They don't have to. Um, we do provide Wi-Fi within all of our residence halls, but they do have the option to plug in with an Ethernet cable if they so choose. Do a lot of students bring printers, their own printers, or do they usually use our campus printers? I would say 50-50. It depends mm -hmm. on it, the student, honestly. A it, printer is a lot of space. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> our rooms are tiny. They're, yes. they're, they're pretty small. Um, <laughs> students are allocated a, a print budget every semester, and, and these are free to them. Um, and they can print in the library, they can print in any of our other computer labs on campus. Um, another question about the book list, will it be a, a, available for each class before the first day? Uh, for the most part, yes, there are occasionally classes that don't have a book, a, an assigned book for the class, um, but otherwise they will be posted at flaglercollegebookstore.com usually around August 1st. Um, ooh, I've got a question about internships. As students go further into their degree, can they apply for internships? This is from Dawn. What do you think, Tara? Absolutely. We're seeing a trend of more and more students interning for credit, and it's becoming a part of their curriculum within their major. Mm -hmm. uh, across the board, we regularly see students begin interning their junior year once they've reached 60 credits. According to each major, they will all have their own prerequisites, whether it's certain classes that they need to complete before they can intern, or if they need to have a specific GPA requirement. Um, our office loves to connect students with internship opportunities because many of the local organizations find it as a great opportunity to find some youthful aspects and perspectives to things to get students in there to get some practical experience. Uh, Lee is asking about her daughter who's coming in as a transfer student who's going to be living on campus for her first year. Um, what are the meal plan options for students living on campus? Um, with it, all incoming students are required to have a full meal plan. Um, if they choose to live on campus for their second year or third or fourth, with it they will have options to choose other meal plans, but all incoming students again have to have the full meal plan. So Mary asks, is it welcome for students to check in with teachers throughout the year about their grade and how they are doing? It's not just welcomed, it's encouraged, it's emphasized. Um, professors hold a certain number of office hours each week. They want students to come by, and the earlier they start coming to them for help if they're struggling, the more options that are available. Uh, most of our professors use an online learning management system called Canvas, and they typically will post assignments and grades there, uh, track attendance there, so students can track some of their own progress. But yes, it's welcome. They're welcome to go see their professor anytime. Uh, email them, come see them, go see their advisor, go see the Learning Resource Center. Go, we have all these people here that, that want to help them. Got a question about the Parent Leadership Council from Dawn. Um, how can a parent be part of the Parent Leadership Council if they don't live in St. Augustine? Well, there's other activities. There's recruiting um, outside of St. Augustine. I live in, Wind in Windermere, which is actually just outside of Orlando, and I've done events in the area. I have um, come up here because it's only two hours, and I, there are people out of state that recruit in their area. You can help out when you come in for a parent's weekend and be a part of the weekend. You help out on move-in day, and even if you're out of state, you're still moving in. So there's ways to, to become involved, even if you're not a local. Okay. Um, Mary's asking a question about internships in Washington, D.C. What kind of internships do we have in Washington, D.C., and are there options for students to kind of set up their own internship? 
Yes to both. Uh, DC, New York, California, we're seeing those as some really big hotspots of where students are wanting to intern. It's a fun and exciting and new place. And so we are developing connections with internship sites there, um, whether they're established internship sites that are connected with other schools and are bringing more students in, or whether it's just more local organizations. We also have huge alumni groups that are in those areas and so we really like to tap into our alumni because alumni love giving back in some sort of way whether it's through that mentorship role to offer an internship or just that connection. Students are really given the opportunity to utilize the network that's given to them on campus whether it's through our office whether it's through their intern coordinators in their different departments or let's say that they find something on their own through discussions with family through their own kind of part-time work or just engagements with other people they have the opportunity to bring that to their intern coordinator or bring it onto campus to kind of formalize it into a four credit internship Tim your office oversees our student orientation or building your legacy student orientation what can our parents expect uh, what do they take part of during orientation and, and what can they expect when they arrive to campus? Sure, the, the first thing that you're going to be part of is the, the madhouse that is moving. Um, Organized chaos. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a wild time, uh, but there's, we have the time uh, frames that everybody will get and that's, that's your moving time. Uh, you'll get your key, you'll go up to the room, you'll get to see it for the first time. It's really exciting, everybody. Uh, but unfortunately, we have to keep people moving because we have lots of people moving into those buildings. So I think that's the first thing that you're ready to expect is that that, that time frame is really exciting, but it's really quick. Uh, so you have to be in and out. We'll move you to our parking garage, and then you have the day with your student. We also have a parent uh, session where parents will sit down with some of the higher administration and learn more about uh, what it means to be an active parent at Flagler College. And there's two sessions for those during the same day. That way, you, you don't have to miss it. And that's parents only. There's no students allowed to, to attend that. Um, once that's over, I mean, really have Sunday to yourselves. Uh, students still have things that they have to go to, and uh, parents are encouraged to support them, but we, we really try to get the students involved as quickly as possible. So I you know you don't want to drop off your student and just wave goodbye and say, <laughs> wish you luck, but uh, we, we do encourage the students to, to get involved and be independent as quickly as possible because that's the transition that they're, they're in the middle of. So um, outside of moving and, and the parent session, we, uh, we really encourage you guys to come back for Family Weekend later in the semester. Uh, but we try to get those students moving as quickly as possible. What are some things that you guys think parents can do over the next couple of months to, to help prepare their students for the transition and maybe to help prepare themselves for the, the transition? Um, Tara, what do you think? With your, with your, your kindergartner that just graduated. Know, <laughs> it's like a vision of what it's going to be like in 12 years. Um, sharing their excitement. Um, Ask them questions, but don't do it for them. Uh, I think as, as long as you can provide kind of that guidance, um, I see that when they're getting ready to graduate is that they don't know how to do things on their own because it's kind of always been done for them. And so to start that trend now of kind of asking them about it, encouraging them to do it themselves, makes for a better functioning adult later on. Sure. What would you guys add to that? Anybody wants to jump in? I say look at the website, see what you need. It, it really does direct you on um, some of the little things you don't think about. With the rain here, I honestly didn't think rain boots. You think, Ugh, who's going to wear them? My kids live in their rain boots during the rainy season, especially when they have to cross the major streets because there's buildings that are just slightly off the campus. And they, it's an old city. It's been around for, what, 450 years. So the roads get a little wet. So, um, you, but you think in your head you've got everything you need and then you find there's something small you don't. But the good thing is when you get here, there's like Bed Bath & Beyond and Target. It, it's a small town, but just a few miles away, maybe two miles away, there's like a big area where you can buy stuff. <laughs> yes, yes. What else would you guys add I to think that? communication, communication um, between your roommates, you know, keep an open mind um, because you're not always gonna agree um, on things and, and try and work things out with each other communicate with your instructors if you're struggling right away you know they're there to help you and they want to help you and they want to see you succeed um, again for financial aid if we've sent out emails look at those emails if you have questions come see us um, I recommend you know the students trying to find out the information and if they don't understand, then get the parents involved. But it's, it's good for the students because they need to know because those loans are in those students' names if they're taking out loans. And um, 
they need to understand how that works, communication. So we've got a question. Uh, what is the best way for out-of-state freshmen to find other out-of-state freshmen from the same area? Anything other than Facebook. Um, if, you're, if your students haven't already joined the class of 2021 Facebook or if you have a transfer student coming in, um, we do really encourage them to join that page. Uh, that's a great way for them to ask questions, to meet other freshmen. They can post something like, hey, I live in Rhode Island. Who else here is from Rhode Island? Um, I'm going to look at our admissions folks. Perhaps they can reach out to their admissions counselor and they might have some ideas about how to connect with other uh, freshmen from their state. And a lot of our students who are on the, that Facebook page right now, they're sharing their other uh, usernames for different social media. So they're sharing their Snapchat names and they're sharing their Instagram names. And so um, we really like for them to facilitate that connection. We're not going to give out their information. Of course, we want to keep your students' information private. Uh, but even if they don't, they're not a regular Facebook user, they might want to jump on that page uh, to begin making some of those connections. Um, I've got a question here about selective service. And I have to admit, this is one that hasn't ever come to me. Uh, does my son's selective service automatically come over to you? He filled it out prior to turning 18, but it still doesn't show as completed. Should he redo? This might be a no. Um, what we'll do is we'll check that. If we don't see it out on the federal site, then we'll ask for the information for you to send it to us. But we can go out there and put in his social security number, his name, and his date of birth to see that he has registered for selective service. It may be that we just have not checked at that time, but it will be checked. Um, we have a lot going on right now in the financial aid office, so it will be done. If it's not marked in and he has done it, then we will have that information. Great. Uh, Mary asks, when do students get their schedules for the semester? Um, the first thing, especially an incoming freshman, will have to do is complete their math placement exam. So just about immediately after they commit to Flagler, they're going to get an email from our math department chair. They need to do that as soon as possible. Once uh, Dr. Sebastian has placed them into their appropriate math class, they'll then get an email clearing them to register, telling them what classes to choose, giving them their first year advisor's contact information. Um, so it depends on where the student is in the process. Uh, we have some students who've already registered. We have some that are still going through that process. Transfer students, um, as soon as they deposit, they get an email with similar information telling them who their advisor is and helping uh, give them some guidance towards choosing their classes. Uh, and they can always reach out to me or reach out to their advisor for help with that. Um, let's see what else we have here. I'm sure I'm, I'm missing some questions. Um, one quick note for those of you who are posting questions, if we run out of time, we will have our social media team come back in and make sure you do get an answer to any questions that you post. Uh, but for now, keep sending them in. We've definitely got some more time. Um, what about, Tim, what about some opportunities for engagement on campus? What can students do to make friends, to get involved, to get engaged with their major once they get here? Sure, so there's, there's a lot of different ways. Uh, I oversee three main uh, leadership organizations, the student government, uh, who really work on connecting the students with uh, whatever issues or, that they're having and really getting those problems solved. Uh, the Campus Activity Board, who plan large-scale events throughout the year. Uh, the Flywood College volunteers, who put together some volunteer services so that students can get involved in the community. Outside of that, we have over 50 uh, student organizations that range from being academic in nature to being sports clubs that compete uh, collegiately with other uh, club teams, and then just social groups. So uh, that really have no connection to any department or sport, but kind of just are, are fun little niches. Uh, we'll have a club night on the first day of classes. So you can come out and, and kind of see who, who's out there and how to get involved and, and sign up for different things. Uh, we also have different hot spots on campus where people kind of just gather. Um, and so that's <laughs> that's going to be the student center and, and our palm garden and the library. I really like these, these central points where people kind of get together and, and the dining hall uh, where people kind of just set up shop and, and really just hang out with each other and really no structured environment um, but really just get to know each other in that way. So maybe a question for our parent on our panel. Would you recommend a car for a semester or a bike, both? A segue. <laughs> no segue. No segue. No segues on campus. I have twins and they share a car. It was my car, so I'm kind of carless now. Um, I do recommend a mode of transportation. It's not required. I know there are bike racks everywhere. And in fact, I think I saw in the new garage, there's a section just for bikes. 
but it helps you get to places like the beach. It helps you just kind of get around town. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's necessary to go from the dorms to your classrooms with it. It's right. not like, we're not spread over miles. Mm -hmm. So it's not like something like that. But if you need to go to Target to get cream for your coffee, mm -hmm. or more coffee pods for your coffee maker, <laughs> then you will need some way to get there. Now, yes, there are friends on campus. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have one, I know my kids have taken their friend. She lives in New York. She has no vehicle, no bicycle. Right. So whenever she needs anything, she says, can you guys give me a lift? And mm -hmm. they say, of course. So you make friends with somebody who has a vehicle or a bicycle that can get you somewhere. Absolutely. I mean, I think our students are pretty well split in terms of those who bring cars sure. and those that don't. And they all manage to get where they're going safely. Um, Michelle, uh, Ken asked, you know, room updates come out June 1st. Where do they find this information? Where can students find yeah. it? So with it, they can find it on their My Flagware account. There's one, the tab's Campus Life, I think. And then within it, there's living on campus. So you click on that, and then it'll go to on-campus living, and it'll be the first thing at the top with room assignment. Mm -hmm. And it'll have the roommate information. And they're able to actually contact their roommates. Um, if they go to their Flagler email address, they can hit the to section, and they can search for their roommate by their last name. And I really do encourage them to reach out to their roommate. So it's not move-in day, and there's two TVs in there, two game systems, and you're walking in and it's like competing noise and there's no room. So it's really just deciding on who's going to bring the big stuff as well, or like the little stuff like who's going to bring the toilet paper the first go around. Stuff like that. A lot of our incoming students have, have never shared a room, maybe maybe not twins, right? Okay. They, they're used to, they they're used to, yeah. they're used they're used to, to each other, yes. yeah. mm -hmm. um, But a lot of our students have never shared a bathroom, they've never shared a room with someone. Do you have any advice uh, for, for to prepare them for some of those maybe conflicts that they'll have with roommates? Well, one of the things we have is we have a roommate agreement form that all the RAs have access to, and I strongly encourage individuals to do it. Some RAs mandate that they do it. Um, that goes over with when can I have guests? When is it quiet time in the room? Um, what, it, what does the environment need to be conducive to sleeping? Um, noise, things along those lines. So just within the room itself. And then we also have a separate suite mate agreement that goes over, okay, let's establish a bathroom cleaning schedule. How do you define clean versus how do I define clean? Um, how long can the dirty dishes stay in the sink? Um, I'm trying to think, can I hang my dirty clothes on the towel rack? It addresses all of those issues. There will be confrontation and it will be uncomfortable, but that's what the RAs are there for. They can come in and help facilitate that conversation if you're not comfortable doing it yourself. Mm -hmm. But it's one of those things you need to feel respected. This is your home, away from home, and we want you to feel that way. So, I mean, if you get in conflicts with your parents about certain things and you have to talk it out, so it's similar with roommates. Yeah. So we've got a question from uh, Danya about FERPA, which is the Federal Education Privacy Rights Act, um, and is, is she asked if there are waiver forms for the students uh, if they want the parents to be involved in their academics. Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, students can go to our registrar's office, which is in Wiley Hall when they get to campus. They can fill out that FERPA waiver form, and you know, we, we love working with parents, but I will say our first point of contact is always going to be the student. And if the student is struggling academically at all, we really want them to be the person communicating with the professor. However, yes, of course, we're happy to work with parents if issues arise. Um, so yes, if, you're, if your student would like to do that, they can see our registrar's office to do that when they get to campus. Um, Craig asked, is there enough space for parking for freshmen? Um, thankfully now, I think we're, we're doing okay with that. Um, parking on campus is first come, first serve. They're not granted a, a parking space of their own, um, but there are pockets of parking all over campus, uh, behind Lewis Hall, behind the gymnasium, and we have a giant parking garage that um, now gives us lots and lots of parking space. Uh, they still should be prepared to walk a little bit to classes, to their residence halls, uh, but yes, we will make sure they have a parking space if they bring, they bring a car. Um, how do students that live in the dorms get packages either from home or if they order from Amazon Prime like we all do regularly? Uh, this is from Julie. Michelle, what do you think? Um, with it, they will be assigned a mailbox on campus. Um, so I think you get that mailbox number when you move in and you're able to send packages to them. Also, if you are coming out of state and you want to ship things, you have that opportunity. But don't start doing it until two weeks before classes start. Um, make sure you put Flagler College CC your student's name so that might lessen some of the stuff you have to either bring by car 
or on the airplane. And you'll be able to pick it up on move-in day because our mailroom will be open select times on that Saturday. Uh, Tim, what can students expect at orientation? What all are we going to be doing with them over the, what, four days that we've got, got them before they start classes? Yeah, so uh, everybody will get a schedule in the mail in June, and then you'll also get another one upon arrival during uh, the first day of orientation. Uh, but really, the, the day is pretty filled and packed with um, meeting different people on campus and learning about the services they provide. And then um, in the evening, there's a social event every evening. Uh, in different areas on campus so that you can kind of figure out and navigate your way around it and meet new folk uh, and those will last until about 9 or 10 so you, your day is really really full during orientation uh, up till when classes start mm -hmm. and then there's always the option of signing your student up and paying for the Disney trip the following Saturday uh, that about 300 plus students every year take part in um, and they go out to Disney for the either the hundredth time if they're from Florida or for the first time if they're out of state <laughs> to, to really get that Florida experience. It, Tara Stevenson, our director of our career development center, has to depart a little early. So thank you, Tara, for joining us. And if you have questions, students can, of course, reach out to her anytime. So thanks. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you all. <laughs> um, we've got a question here from Ken. How early should we plan to be there on move-in day? And what should we expect? How does the move-in schedule work? Well, with it, you're going to need your room assignment first. Um, once you get your room assignment and the packet that Tim is sending out, you can look at your building and floor assignment and you'll have certain times. Do not arrive super early before that time because I'm not gonna let you move in. <laughs> because we have a very good system in place because we, have, we move in from the top going down. Mm -hmm. um, if you do arrive a little early, you can check in in our student center. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times there's different offices there. You'll be able to get your ID. Um, you can pick up your books and there's the health services. So you'll have a whole thing to go through on that and what to expect organized chaos like right I am extremely type A everything's organized move in day mm -hmm. there's organized. always something you always can't something. prepare for <laughs> bring water it's going to be hot and the parents leadership council does a phenomenal job of posting up coffee and water within the residence halls but bring water um, be prepared it's going to be a process we will have student leaders there helping move in mm -hmm. you have your parking spot for 30 minutes so when you go you park my recommendation is park send the student in to get their key and start unloading the thing. Know your room number when you come because the student's leaders will come up and you'll be like, we're going to this room. So the quicker you can get things unloaded, the more time you can spend decorating the room, going to the different places around campus and enjoying that experience with your student. Yeah. It will be hot, you know, prepare for that. You're gonna be sweaty. Um, it is Florida in August. Um, it, it's a long day, but we have lots of help. I mean, that's the thing that I'm always overwhelmed with when I come in on moving day. There's just so many people there unloading cars and taking them upstairs. Um, so we will we'll make sure you get through it and have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, what about single rooms? If a student wants to live alone, is that an option, and then does it cost more? It does cost more. It's seventy three fifty an academic year for a single room, and with it, they have to email me. Okay. And those that. are fairly limited. Very limited right. for those. So they're pretty much full now. Okay. <laughs> um, Rhonda asked, do we need to apply for the Parent PLUS loan for additional funds, or is there something the student can apply for? The parent needs to apply for the Parent PLUS. A student can only receive, if they're a freshman, $5,500 in loan money, in federal loan money. Um, so the parent would have to apply. They could also apply for a private loan, uh, but with the private loans, a lot of times they have to have a co-signer, which would be um, a parent or maybe a grandparent or something. You can go ahead and apply. I would recommend that you apply, um, and to we will reach out to you to find out exactly the limit that you're wanting. We cannot go over the budget uh, for the school year, and I would recommend only taking out what you need for the cover of both fall and spring. I wouldn't go up to the budget if you don't need to just because that's quite a bit of extra money that you're going to have to pay back and there is interest. Uh, you can apply for the parent loan at www.studentloans.gov and you would use your information when you're logging in, not your child. And um, Basically, you're putting in your information and you'll know the answer right away whether you qualify or not. And we receive that information when you list Flagler College. 
Um, Lori wants to know, when will the next financial financial aid award packets be out? When will you guys be sending out award packages to, our, to the next batch? To the next batch. So if students haven't already received their financial aid award, when can they expect to receive it? Um, if you have not received one already, and you, I would um, reach out to our office because a lot of the awards have went out to our new students and to the transfer students, not unless you're one that has actually just have been admitted. Um, most of the awards have went out, and if you have not received one, again, I would reach out to the counselor because it may have gotten lost in the mail or something like that. So we know that the, the first year of college especially can be particularly challenging. So maybe let's talk a little bit about some of the, the problems or challenges that students face in their first year um, and maybe how they can work through those. So Tim, what, what do you see? I know you, you, I mean you, you sure. touch just about every student on campus. Where do you see them struggle a little bit? Sure, I think uh, a lot of students take on too many things too early, uh, whether it's a job and eight clubs and all their classes and an that they're, they're, they're overwhelmed. And so I, I really don't think students should get hyper involved too early. I think they should really take it slow and ease into the things that they're really interested in mm -hmm. uh, or that they, they find the most important. I think that's always gonna be classes and then run down the succession there uh, on however the student feels comfortable. Um, after that, I think it's really be becoming comfortable uh, in their new home. This is probably their first time living away from home. They're being really brave and maybe living with a stranger, uh, which is, I, I think is wild. Um, <laughs> it's, just, it's exciting. It's, it's just it's such a new experience, and so it's, it's really getting comfortable in, in your new home and uh, finding finding your folks. And the RAs do a really great job of, of having people meet on their hallways. Uh -huh. um, the Campus Activity Board throws these events early on in the year so people can go out and meet people outside of that, that residence hall bubble. Um, but really trying to, to meet people in classes or, or just find just become comfortable in, in your new place of, of life. Hopefully they won't mind me putting them on their spot, that, but did your twins face any particular challenges in their first year at Flagler that, that looking back that... They did. Um, mostly it was time management. Yes. I mean, I'd be getting texts at two in the morning. i still working on my paper, and I'm like, when did you start this? <laughs> and that's a problem I think every student does. I yes. Mean, I think we all did it, you know, start the project the night before. But they eventually learn to go through and um, just getting comfortable in their environment. Their first year, they did have an, a roommate, mm -hmm. and um, that was a little awkward, I think, for everybody. Mm -hmm. They're used to each other, mm -hmm. and in the three years they're here and going into their fourth year, they're still each other's roommates. Mm -hmm. But somebody new comes in, and she really was not the same as my girls. My girls are like kind of dorky. And she really wasn't. And, uh, Hopefully they're not tuning and, in. <laughs> no, I, I love my girls, but they are. They're, they're into their mangas, and which is what the kids today are, but right. their roommate was not. So she's trying to find a common ground. Uh -huh. And eventually she found friends, and she moved on, and they got another roommate in who was just like them. Right. And that worked out really well. And I have to say, Residence Life was really great in that, in helping place somebody into their room that would be a better match. And I know you, you don't know mm -hmm. what you're going to get. And then, um, but time management was their biggest concern, and just figuring out how to do things on their own, because I am a hovering parent, mm -hmm. and um, it, it was hard for me to let them go off on their own, but I knew they needed to, and I think it's, they've grown exponentially because they were able to learn to contact financial aid when they wanted to take summer classes and didn't know how to go through the process and things like that, and, and the school really works with them and it helps them become adults. I mean, they're coming in as an 18-year-old child. Right, right. And, and I know we all think 18-year-old is an adult, but it's really not. And if you ask them, because they're both psychology majors, you're not an adult till you're 25. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's, it's something, you know. That I, like, I still, some days, I question whether I'm an adult. But me so me too, kind of, but yeah. overall, you yeah. know. So, but it helps at, if they learn, they, they communicate with their teachers. They're actually very friendly with their teachers mm -hmm. because in their major, they have the same teachers. You can't hide here. You, you can't, can't hide. hide. Yeah. And, and there's no <laughs> child getting left behind because they've had teachers and they will go searching for those teachers yes. for certain classes. Um, one of them is in the criminology department, so there's really just the three main teachers, mm -hmm. and they're really friendly. I mean, we got to watch them with their teachers at an event, and I was like, they're like best friends. And they're joking around with them, and that's best friends who will fail you if needed. They will, yeah. <laughs> no, but they're honest best friends. Right. But they're there to you. So, so just to help become adults, and and they need to learn 
and I know I just really straight off the question. No, this is great. <laughs> this is great, yeah. But it, it is something they do eventually learn. Yeah. I mean, you know, the kids will come in one way and come out their first semester completely different. Yeah. In a good way, not in a bad way. And Michelle, I know you, you and your RAs, you guys help the students navigate a lot of problems. What are some things that you see commonly pop up that maybe uh, they can head off before they get here? Roommate confrontations. Yeah. People being hesitant to confront that roommate or they don't want to come and talk to me or they don't want to talk to the RAs. The RAs can be friends with your roommates, they're not going to care. If there's an issue, they're going to address it. I promise I'm not overly scary. You walk into my <laughs> office, there's like lanterns hanging and pictures everywhere. Everybody has candy. I don't have candy because I'll eat it all. <laughs> <laughs> but with it, just stepping out of that comfort zone and yes, the parents, I will get phone calls from parents, hey, my student doesn't feel comfortable. They need to come and talk to me. I will sit there. I mean, I'm on call for a week at a time. If there's a situation at 2 a.m., I'm here at 2 a.m. addressing situations. It's just, we're here to help. And it's really just, it is out of the comfort zone for some, but ask RAs, ask other student leaders, ask us. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't know where I am, you can go to jail, you can go to Tim, you can go to financial aid, and they'll all direct you. Yes. Right. I think that's one of the great things about having such a small campus is that it's a one-stop shop. You go and ask the question once, and if we don't know the answer, we're going to find the answer for you, yep. and, and people are going to be super helpful. Something yeah. that I um, want to say, I know a lot of you, especially being the first time away from home, you'll be homesick, um, and maybe after the first couple of weeks of school, want to withdraw. I recommend do not withdraw. Stick it out that first semester, because you may find by the end of the semester, oh man, I'm so glad I didn't leave and continue and make new friends. Um, because if you do withdraw, there is, um, it affects your financial aid and you still will owe money to the school. So stick it out that first semester. You know, you will be homesick. It happens to everybody. It happens to grownups um, when you move to a new place. Um, stick it out because you'll, you'll never know if you don't and you go home and say, oh, man, I wish I'd stayed. Mm -hmm. Stick it out because it is worth it, and, and you may you may not stay come spring, but then you, you'll, some of you will stay and continue and make great friends, and you don't end up owing money that you don't need to show for. Have nothing to show for it, no credits or anything. So stick it out at least till the end of that semester so that you have credits, and if you decide Flagler's not for you, you know, move on, but um, you'll be surprised. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, and this is one of the things that I always tell students on, and parents when they first get here is everyone's nervous. We're, we're nervous. The students are nervous. It, it is a transition for everyone. And for some students, it's four days in, they feel at home, they've made friends. For some, it takes longer. For some, it may take um, a couple of semesters, but eventually they will sort of find their place here and find their home. And I think that's great advice to parents to, to support them, be sympathetic, but encourage them to, to stay here and, and get engaged and get involved. Remind them why they chose Flagler. I mean, there was some point when the student came to campus and said, this is where I want to be. Remind them of that choice and, and, and help get them through that, that transitional time. Um, so Ken asked, how do we purchase parking spots? So, so your student will receive an email from our business office later in the summer with information on purchasing parking passes. Or if they want to wait till they get here in August, they can do it face to face. They can walk right up and pick it up. Um, even for students who purchase it online, they will pick up the pass when they get to campus in August. So either option is fine. Um, Susan wants to know, is there a health center on campus and do students need to bring a copy of their insurance card? Um, yes, yes and yes. Yes and yes. <laughs> um, we do have health services on campus. Um, we have a doctor that comes a couple times a week as well as a certified nurse practitioner and a nurse. Um, they're able to assist with simple like basic things and whatnot. With it I would always encourage a copy of your health insurance card because with it, God forbid your student has to go to the hospital, the first thing they ask for is that health insurance card mm -hmm. and it's always good to have that copy so if they have to go to urgent care or they have to do things that are down here they're not having to call you that's also encouraging that independence of them mm -hmm. given yes they should call you if they're going <laughs> to these places but yes I would send copies of it 
Uh, parents and students will also be receiving an email and a letter in the mail sometime in the next few weeks about our student health insurance that students can purchase through the college. Um, all students, if they're not purchasing it through the school, will need to complete a waiver process. So look for that in, in, the, in the mail and the email and, and take care of that before you can. Um, but if they do have health insurance, make sure they have that information with them. Um, so we have a question. When family visits, how is the campus with service dogs? We are you know, accessible uh, to, to any, the, any of those with disabilities, and of course your service animals are welcome on our campus in any of our locations. I, I don't think there will be any problems with that. Um, let's see, we are local. Can my son get his student ID prior to August? Um, yes, I would encourage your, your son to sign up for one of our campus SOAR dates. Uh, these are June 16th and July 14th. He can come to campus. Our security will be doing IDs on those two days, he'll have an opportunity to take care of some other things on campus. Meet with an advisor, meet with financial aid, meet with student accounts, um, you know, explore campus a little bit. Um, otherwise, uh, our security typically isn't doing student IDs beyond those two days until orientation in August. So if he's not able to, to come in for one of those two dates, uh, he can definitely do it when he gets to campus in August with no problem. Let's see, my, my son has a peanut and Trina allergy. Is there an issue with him carrying an EpiPen and are there EpiPens in the health center? There is not an issue carrying an EpiPen. I carry one daily. Um, with it, I would have to check with health services. The best bet is to email health services at flagwire.edu and ask them and they would be able to answer that question. They have hours until the end of summer term A. Um, and something to note about allergies, uh, our dining services uh, staff is great at working with students who have particular, particular dietary restrictions, uh, everything from allergies to gluten-free to vegan, vegetarian. Uh, if they have any trouble finding things that they can eat in the dining hall, they can always approach our director of dining services and he'll be happy to, to help things out. Um, when is Parents Weekend? This is from Kathleen. Sure, that's going to be uh, late October. Uh, I believe the weekend's October 23rd. Yeah, I think it's usually like the third weekend in uh, October. That date might be wrong, but it's it's uh, it's late October, and that's a, a Friday, Saturday, Sunday of programming where we bring in family members and, and show them around town and show them the school and, and get them a little bit more involved. Fantastic. I think we maybe have got time for just one or two more questions if anybody wants to, to chime in with them. Um, it, maybe a little last minute advice for for our parents and our incoming students anything that you guys would add that we haven't already covered just be excited like this is a huge transition just not for your student but for you i didn't appreciate it when i was going to college but now i talk to my parents about it and they like to remind me of all the stuff i brought in on move in but <laughs> but it's sharing in that excitement like you're a Flagler family member now. Like, mm -hmm. having that pride, it's it's awesome. And something to note, I was talking earlier with uh, some of our admissions folks, you will have to leave uh, at orientation after that first day. So at the, the same day as move in, we will kick you out. Um, stay in St. Augustine, have a great time, but we're gonna, we're gonna ask you to leave. At 6.45. At 6.45, <laughs> so your day will end at 6.45, just in time for happy hour. Um, I see a question coming in from our social media folks. Do students need to make an appointment with the Learning Resource Center? They're not required to, but they are encouraged to. We have an online appointment system where students can log in, uh, choose the subject they're, they wanna be tutored in, they can make an appointment, and that way they don't have to wait when they show up, so we always encourage them to do that. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, thank you. You guys are amazing. Ah, thanks for the compliment. <laughs> um, maybe one last question. Are we permitted to bring furniture into the dorms? <laughs> Depends. <laughs> no again, size beds. <laughs> no. Um, again, I will reinforce, look at the rooms before you decide to. I can understand, like, a bookshelf. Yeah. Some people will build little things to go over their desk to put, like, little hutches on them. That's fine. Um, the over-the-bed storage, fantastic. But like a couch, no. <laughs> um, I really, again, encourage you to see the room before you decide to get stuff. Talk to the roommates because if both roommates bring in bookshelves and chairs, it's, yeah, it's not going to work well. And all the furniture that's in the room has to stay in the room. Mm -hmm. Tim, for the Disney trip, how much does that cost and how do they sign up? Sure. 
my Disney sheet right here. <laughs> I, I expected this to come up sooner. Uh, so it costs $110, and you go to flywood.edu slash ICS, uh, and then you follow the instructions there to make the payment. Awesome. And they'll get something in the mail over the summer about this as well. They'll get the same sheet and an orientation packet that will come out with, with lots of information from, from parking decals to uh, where to park on campus day of orientation to, to Disney. And if I can just make a note on that Disney trip, encourage your kids to do it. They make friends on the bus. Yeah. You've got a two hour ride and if they get stuck on I-4 traffic, it could be like a two and a half hour ride to get down to Disney and they talk to the people on the bus. So it's another new way for your student to meet people. Absolutely. So one final question, will this be rebroadcast for others to watch? Yes, our social media folks are nodding. Um, so for those of you who may be tuned in late or had to leave early, you can come back to our Facebook page and watch the entire feed. And of course, this isn't your only opportunity to ask questions. Um, you can always send them our way to our specific offices. If you don't know who to contact, you can always contact me first year at flagler.edu or your admissions office. And uh, we look forward to meeting all of you. Thanks to our panelists for your answers today. And one more thing, Terry. If you haven't accepted your financial aid, accept it so it'll show up on your bill and you'll have a more accurate bill. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you for tuning in and have a great day.